Welcome to section 6.4, select and draw conclusions from samples. Two terms that we just need to become familiar with before this section. The first is the population. So a population is all of the people or animals or subjects within a specific group. Uh, so the population of the United States is 300 and some million people. Uh, the population of our school uh, is, I think, three to 400 some people. Uh, the population of, uh, of Montana, I think is like a third of the number of cows that they have. It's some really weird number like that. So that's the population. A sample is a way that we can just take uh, a small subset of the population and try to go draw conclusions based off of information on the people or beings in our sample. Now, there's two different types of samples. Uh, there are biased samples and unbiased samples. Okay, that's maybe a little bit too much, too much of a generalization, but for our purposes in this class, there's either biased or unbiased. So a couple examples of a biased sample. Uh, first is a self-selected sample. Uh, you chose yourself to be part of this sample. So if you go to Subway and you get a survey on the bottom of your receipt and you go and take that survey, this is a self-selected sample. Uh, or if uh, you get a letter in the mail uh, and you go and fill out a survey and send it back in. Or you, uh, and just whatever way you want to uh, give your feedback and that's, and so you are therefore choosing to be a uh, participant in this. Big reason why this is biased uh, is you will either get really positive or really negative responses. If I went to Subway and everything was just as I was expecting, I'm not gonna fill out that survey. Yes, you can bribe me with a free cookie or two, but I'm not gonna fill out your survey. It, it's just not worth my time and energy. Now, if I had a really terrible experience, I'm gonna go and fill out that survey, get my free cookies as compensation for the bad experience I had and hope that something's going to change because I filled out the survey. Uh, or you could have had a really good experience. Um, I had a really great experience uh, at a hotel one time uh, where they accidentally put me into a room that they had reserved for someone else. And so when they uh, had me move rooms, they gave me as many free meal coupons as I wanted for the weekend. Uh, and since I was there for a wedding, I ended up getting the entire wedding party a free meal for breakfast on Sunday, uh, which would have cost the hotel like three to four hundred dollars. It was pretty cool uh, and I just had a great experience and so I made sure that I went and filled out a survey and just said I know you all were stressed about this but man I really appreciated the service I got. Thank you so much. Uh, that would be another example of a self-selected sample. A convenience sample is if you are the person who are who's figuring out the sample of people you're just going to do whatever is most convenient. Uh, so you just call the people who you have their numbers in your phone, or actually more likely you text the people whose numbers you have in your phone. Uh, if I wanted to find out what is the favorite lunch at school and I only asked my class, well, my class might actually be a biased group uh, because first of all, they're not representative of the whole school. I only have eighth graders, ninth graders, and then some chunk of 10th and 11th but I'm missing the sixth and seventh. I don't really have any seniors. So my number of students and who my students would represent don't really fit across all categories that well. Uh, so it might not be great. Also coming out of my class and then going to lunch or coming from lunch and coming to my class, maybe that has now biased them either for or against whatever lunch we had that day. Who knows? But just because it was convenient for me as the sampler does not make it a good sample. Unbiased samples, uh, there's a couple of different ways that I will encourage you to do for this class. There's some other ways in real life too, but this is sort of the ways that I would go about it. Uh, first, you have a systematic sample. Uh, the key word of this is system. So you're gonna have some system in place that helps you select the people. So I wanna know how people are feeling coming out of Costco nowadays. 
I could go and stand outside Costco and I would ask every 10th person uh, that comes out how their experience was. And so now that I've got a system in place, my own judgments or biases aren't coming into play as much because I have a system. Uh, and so that's one way you could do it. Uh, if I wanted to uh, find out from the class, uh, how, did, how did we like uh, the content from chapter five? Uh, I could have every third person fill out uh, a form and let me know. Uh, or I might go and uh, if I'm trying to figure out what we did well or not so great on a test, I could go and pick out like every fourth test uh, and use that to figure out, okay, this is just a sampling of the type of information I have. Uh, so that's another way that you could do a systematic sample. A random sample, a truly random sample, is basically you put everyone's name in a hat and you draw out however many names you want it. Uh, so everyone has an equal chance from the very beginning. Uh, or for our class, we could uh, assign everyone a number alphabetically and then choose some numbers using a number generator, uh, which I'll show you how to do that on your calculator in a little bit. Uh, or different ways like that. So those are the difference between biased and unbiased samples. So uh, a sports writer wants to survey college baseball coaches about whether they think wooden bats should be mandatory throughout college baseball. We have two different types of samples that this sports writer tried. The first, the sports writer contacts only the coaches that he has cell phone numbers for. What type of sample is this? Well, this is a convenient sample uh, because uh, for if it's only the ones that he has cell phone numbers for, it's convenient for him as the sports writer. Uh, so it is a convenience sample. Whoops. Con. So it's a convenience sample. Or uh, the sports writer mailed out surveys to all the coaches and just uses the surveys that are returned. Well, even though he, sur he surveyed all of the coaches, the only ones that got returned are the self-selected ones. So that's a self-selected sample because the coaches only responded if they wanted to or not. Uh, they weren't really approached or worked with in a different way. Uh, a manager at a concert hall wants to know how often people attend concerts. So the manager asks 50 people standing in line how many concerts per year they attend. Is the sample biased? Why? Well, yeah, it is biased because if they are at the concert, that means they're more likely that they are already going to concerts. Uh, if a good chunk of the population doesn't go to any concerts, that's not even going to be re represented here because everyone here is guaranteed to already be going to at least one concert. So this is absolutely a biased sample. Uh, so if we want to randomly select 40 people from 324, well, what I would do here uh, would be, uh, we're going to use our graphing calculator to figure this one out. So if we're going to use our graphing calculator to select people randomly, uh, what we'll actually do is we'll come over here to math, and then we'll go back over to probability, PRB, and this time we're gonna go down number five, rand int. Uh, this stands for random integer. Now, our numbers for this, uh, we have 324 people. So our numbers, if we numbered all of our people, would be from 1 to 324. So we could, so we will tell the calculator that. We'll do 1, comma, 324. And then you hit enter. It will give you a random number from 1 to 324. And if you want to do this again to get a second person, you can hit enter again. And then enter a third time, and a fourth time, and a fifth time. And eventually, if you do this enough, you will come up with our, all 40 people that we need. Another option you could do, uh, let's go second enter to bring back that equation, uh, is you could do comma, and then if you clicked five, you're gonna say, this is, tells it to draw five numbers from one to 324. Uh, and so it's 309, 72, 123. So now I have to scroll to the right, uh, and 303. So that would get you your five numbers. You could do all 40 at once, but you're gonna to have to keep scrolling to the right and that's gonna be hard to read. 
So I'd suggest doing it in like chunks of five. The other piece with this is you will have to create a system in place uh, for what if your calculator picks the same number a second time. I can almost guarantee you if you're drawing 40 numbers, it's going to happen. So you could put a system in place for if the same number is drawn, we're going to go one number up or one number down. You could also put a system in a place of if we draw the same number again, we will just get rid of it and draw one more number at the end uh, and do that as many times as you need to. I'm less of a fan of that just because it's going to take more time to make sure that you got all the numbers you needed as opposed to, oh, we already had a 15, so instead of 15, this is now a 16. Uh, that would still be a random process. So that's just another way that you could go about trying to do this. The last thing in this section is figuring out what is the margin of error for a sample. So if we have n people in our sample, the margin of error is equal to plus or minus one over the square root of n. What this says is we know we didn't get to ask everyone in the population uh, for our sample as all well, for the population instead of doing a sample. That was just too much work, too much money, we couldn't do it. So we need to just recognize right away that our, sam our conclusions from our sample aren't actually perfectly accurate. Uh, we might not have gotten the outliers. We might have gotten an outlier instead of the main people. So our data isn't quite as nice as we would like. But the more people we have, the more accurate we expect this to be. So the margin of error is a way for us to calculate what this looks like. Uh, so for example, in a survey of 1,011 people, 52 said that TV is their main source of news. What is the margin of error for this survey? Well, we need the number of people in our sample, which is 1,011. So it's gonna be plus or minus uh, one over the square root of 1,011. Well, if we type that into our calculator quick, one over the square root of 1,011, that will come out to uh, plus or minus 0 0.0314. Or this is as a decimal, if you want it as a percent, it'd be plus or minus 3.14%. So what that tells us uh, is we can now figure out an, an interval that will likely contain the exact percent of all people who use TV as their main source of news. So we came up to a conclusion of 52%, but it could be 52 plus 3.14, or it could also be down to 52 minus 3.14. Well, that first one will come out to 55.14. The bottom one's going to be a 48.86. So the likely interval is going to be from 48.86 all the way up to 55.14. I'm not quite sure when we're going to get to this section. So if we haven't gotten, or so if we've gotten here and we are still anticipating presidential election season this year, uh, because it is 2020, you're going to see a lot of surveys about what state is going to go for which presidential candidate. Uh, the good surveys will admit to their interval or their margin of error or their sample size. If they aren't telling you that type of information, watch out because it's maybe not the most reliable survey. Uh, so the other thing we can do is we can work backwards. So if the margin of error is plus or minus 5%, we can then figure out how many people were surveyed. So if it was plus or minus 5%, let's first convert that to a decimal. So it'd be plus or minus 0 0.05, which is going to equal 1 over the square root of n. Well, we can now multiply both sides by the square root of n and divide by 0 0.05. Or in other words, uh, we can cross multiply here, which would give us a 0 0.05 square root of n equals 1. Now we can divide by 0 0.05 on both sides. And we'll get the square root of n equals uh, 1 divided by 0.05. That will give us an answer of 20. 
So then when we square both sides, we will come up with an answer of n has to equal 400. So if you have a 5% margin of error, you surveyed about 400 people. So that's all I've got for you. So good luck and let me know if you've got any questions on this section.